Hi Internet! We wanted to delve into the details and nuances of slow rolling today. The idea of slow rolling is a curious case where it's technically the proper way to play, rules as written, but everyone defaults to the optional rule for fast rolling on page 28 of the core rulebook. And in the majority of cases, fast rolling is 100% okay. There's no difference in outcomes if you slow or fast roll, and that's a good thing. If we had to slow roll every attack sequence in the game, it would take forever. However, there are some specific circumstances we want to cover where slow rolling is beneficial or even necessary. Let's get into it. The golden rule of slow rolling is communication. It is paramount that when you switch between fast rolling and slow rolling, you inform your opponent of what you are doing and most importantly, why. You want to make sure they are aware of what special rules are relevant to your slow rolling and spare them the unsavory gotcha moment. When I slow roll, I make the rolls one at a time, but all of them before my opponent makes any subsequent rolls. This is a matter of sportsmanship and tabletop etiquette, so they can know all of the outcomes of your slow roll to inform their decisions on any tactics they may want to use in response, just as they would if I were fast rolling. We will be looking at slow rolling in the context of special effects on hit rolls, wound rolls, and the various forms of the feel no pain rule such as disgustingly resilient. This video is not an exhaustive discussion of every situation where slow rolling can or should be applied, but in providing various examples here where it is relevant, you can extrapolate to when in your games you should tell your opponent, all right, we gotta slow down for a second here because these sixes get silly. Speaking of silly sixes, the first place you might need to slow down is the hit roll. Some of the special effects on hit rolls can generate additional hit rolls, additional automatic hits, or completely bypass the wound roll. You may be thinking to yourself, but none of those situations need slow rolling. And you're absolutely right. This was just a mental warm up. Lesson number one just because something unique happens on a dice roll doesn't always mean you need to slow roll. As a rule of thumb, Think about how the outcomes would change if you rolled each dice individually versus all at once. If nothing would be affected, then you don't need a slow roll. It's wound rolls where things start to get really interesting. More often than not, on a 6-up. Some require slow rolling, and some don't. Let's take a look at the Tau Rail Rifle. On the wound roll of a 6-up, it generates one mortal wound in addition to normal damage. Importantly, the mortal wound occurs immediately when the wound roll of 6 occurs. Of note, this is not detailed in the core manual explicitly, but rather in the designer commentary FAQ, which you can find a link to in the video description. For this example, the rail rifle's target will be under half range, so as a rapid fire 1 weapon it has 2 shots, and has scored 2 hits. If you were fast rolling, you would then pick up both dice and roll them at the same time to wound. What if those two dice land as a 5 and a 6? What happens next? Which was the first shot, and which was the second? And where this becomes important is the injury roll for the target model. If the 6 was the first shot, and your target has only one wound remaining, the mortal wound would immediately remove that remaining wound and trigger an injury roll. And in this scenario, you would roll one dice for your injury roll. But if the 5 was the first shot, then with a whopping minus 4 AP, it's unlikely your opponent will save. On a failed save, the rail rifle will then do D3 damage. This takes you to an injury roll, and with the chance of multiple damage, the odds of taking your target out of action increase dramatically. So in this example, we hope we've driven home how important it is to slow roll when an attack sequence can be interrupted by early damage, which may affect the injury roll. You should always slow roll to eliminate any ambiguity of which shot was the first in these situations. We'll quickly cover another couple of examples. Similar to the rail rifles, the Fulgurite Electro Priest can cause mortal wounds as well. They don't get a bonus mortal wound, but on a 6-up, their damage is simply flipped to mortal wound damage instead. Since this bypasses part of the attack sequence, it's good practice to slow roll 
so you know the order in which attacks would hit your opponent. Keeping in line with your beloved faction, Alex, the Radium Carbine also comes to mind. This weapon does not bypass the attack sequence, but on a 6-up, it causes 3 damage instead. It's important to know the order of shots in this situation because the attack that takes the target down to 0 wounds will dictate the number of dice rolled for the injury roll. And rounding up the discussion of silly 6s for wound rolls, one scenario that does not need to be slow rolled is for weapons that provide additional armor piercing on a 6-up. As long as the damage is the same, you don't need to slow roll, but be sure to indicate how many of these silly sixes you get so your opponent knows the proper modifiers for their saving throws. Moving down the attack sequence, we get to the saving throw. A good rule of thumb is, if the wound rolls had been slow rolled, then chances are your saving throws have to be slow rolled as well. Let's go back to the previous scenario with the variable damage. If a radium carbine wounds twice, the second of which was on a 6, therefore doing 3 damage. You should slow roll your saves to know which attacks, if any, you were able to shrug off. The target may actually prefer to have failed the first save if they also failed the second, so the injury roll only uses one die. And with respect to the variable armor piercing, you need to be aware of which dice is making which save, the normal one or against the more impactful shot. You don't need to slow roll necessarily, but at least roll separate die indicating which is for which shot. Next in the attack sequence is dealing damage. If your weapon deals a variable amount of damage, you always will need to slow roll. Many weapons, one of which is the Orc Power Claw, do variable damage, D3 damage in this example. If two or more attacks go through, when determining the damage dealt, you must roll each attack's damage one at a time. It's really mostly relevant to models with more than one wound. For one wound models, it's still important to roll the dice to determine the value of damage dealt on that first attack, as it's important to the injury roll as we've dictated before. Remember, the damage characteristic of the attack that takes a target down to zero wounds determines the number of dice rolled for the injury roll. Against a two or more wound model, you need to know the damage of the attack that took your target down to zero wounds. Let's put the Power Claw up against a three wound model. If three attacks from the Power Claw get through the target's armor, if you roll all the damage dice at once and you get a 2, 3, and a 6, which are effectively a 1, 2, and 3 damage, you have no idea which attack dealt the damage that took the target down to zero wounds. If the order was 2 damage, 1 damage, and then the 3, you would only roll one die for the injury roll as that was the attack that took your target down to zero wounds. If the order was 3 damage, 2, and then 1, you would roll 3 dice for the injury roll as the first attack had a whopping 3 damage and took your target down to 0 wounds all on its own. I could keep going, but I hope the point is clear. Slow rolling prevents this confusion and ambiguity, keeping the order clear and the outcome obvious. To piggyback on this, it's important to note that there are situations where you should slow down even more with variable damage weapons. This relates to when attacking models with a rule dubbed in the community as a feel no pain, such as the death guard rule disgustingly resilient come into play. This rule, and rules like it, afford the target model a final chance to shrug off incoming damage. On a multi-wound model, even if you score 3 damage on your d3 attack, all 3 might not go through. We'll highlight this with an example. Let's take the Drukhari Grotesque. This model has a staggering four wounds, but also has a rule called Power from Pain, which allows it to ignore incoming damage on a 6-up. This is the exact same wording as all other Feel No Pain rules, just with a different name. The way this interacts with the attack sequence is that for every attack that causes damage, you would roll a d6 for each point of incoming damage and ignore one point of that damage for every 6-up you get. So if three attacks from the Power Claw get through the grotesque save, not only do you need to slow roll for your damage value as our previous example, but you must slower roll it, allowing your opponent to make their feel no pain roll and see how much damage is actually allocated per attack. Let's say you slow rolled your damage before your opponent rolled their feel no pain rolls, and of your three attacks, your first damage was three damage, your second was one damage, 
and your final one was two damage, a total of six. If your opponent then rolls their six dice and land a six up on only two of them, which two damage points did they shrug off? You have no idea. Depending on which points of incoming damage were ignored, you could end up with a one damage or a two damage attack reducing the grotesque down to zero wounds. If instead you allowed your opponent to roll their feel no pain rolls after each damage dice, there would be no ambiguity and the end result would be clear. And that's the blessed nuts and bolts of it. As we've said in many of our videos, be sure to know your army and their special rules, but also be sure to have thought about how they may be affected by fast versus slow rolling. You're responsible for being accountable for your army's rules, but don't stress too much about it. Newer players, as well as experienced players, will still fast roll when they should have slow rolled. We both have. It happens. If it does, just be upfront about it with your opponent and decide on a way to proceed that you're both happy with. Either re-rolling, but this time slowly, flipping a coin, OR A BRUTAL FIGHT TO THE DEATH TO SEE WHO THE TOUGHEST ORC IS! Oh dear, here we go again. Okay, we should go before this gets any worse. See you next time. And happy October, everyone. It's October, you get... Whoa!